Welcome to The Benning Report. Now, before putting rounds down range on a target, the FIST, or fire support team, must be on top of its game. Our Sergeant Rebecca Reyes from 3rd Brigade Public Affairs shows us how soldiers in her unit train to get the job done. Nothing lasts forever, especially the skills soldiers need to do their jobs. That's why training is always important. For the fire support soldiers of 3rd Heavy Brigade Combat Team, that means making sure they're always ready. Whether it's setting up their equipment to standard, or identifying and destroying a target. It's important because it helps save lives. It helps keep the other troops that are around you safe. It can help deter the enemy from actually maneuvering on you, uh, becoming one of those POWs that no one ever wants to become. Today, these 3rd Brigade Fisters are training using a simulator that lets them call for fire and then make adjustments to hit their target. They should be reinforcing this training daily, not necessarily here at the call for fire center, but they should be going over their training every single day because it is an extremely perishable skill. It's no easy task, but these soldiers say they love their job. You know, if we're not crisp and clear, we can get somebody killed or we can get raided, any of the FOB, stuff like that. So we need to make sure that we're on top of uh, training and making sure that we get our stuff down so we don't make a mistake. I love my job. It's uh, very fun. So it's always interesting. And it's not all about blowing stuff up either. Sometimes just being part of a tight-knit group is the best part. That, that is the thing I, I, I love the most, that we actually have our hands on, always on the move, highly motivated, and just is rocking. With an upcoming deployment, these soldiers and their leaders are ensuring that they're ready for the mission ahead. Reporting from Kelly Hill, I'm Army Sergeant Rebecca Reyes. That's it for this edition of the Benning Report. Remember, you can watch these and other news stories online at BenningTV.com. From the Public Affairs Office, thanks for watching and have a great day. On a Saturday in the early afternoon, a Fort Benning soldier was killed in a motorcycle accident near Phoenix City. The Phoenix City police believe that some stunt riding was being performed or about to be performed when a truck turned into the rider's path. The soldier lost control trying to avoid a collision. Unfortunately, he could not. The soldier was pronounced dead at the scene. Even though the soldier was wearing a helmet and personal protective equipment, it was not enough to save him from the high rate of impact that killed him instantly. This accident was 100% preventable, and there are common correlations in high-risk riders. By identifying these risk factors in yourself, your fellow riders, your peers, subordinates, or family members, you just might be able to intervene, and that could mean saving a life. Statistics show the common denominators among motorcycle crashes at Fort Benning is a 27 to 36-year-old male who has a couple of deployments under his belt and has a combat support job. E5s, E6s, and captains, and those who drive Suzuki brand motorcycles are at an even higher risk. But any rider susceptible to peer pressure can be vulnerable. Let's all do our part and keep a close eye on the soldiers you know who own motorcycles. Look for high risk patterns and intervene if necessary. Speed is the major cause of accidents. Don't give in to peer pressure and obey the speed limits. By being a part of our great army during this time in our history is a remarkable act. Be smart and live to tell about it.
Army Services Blood Program gets your blood to those who need it most. To find a donor center near you, visit militaryblood.dod.mil. They come back to parades, high school bands, and celebrations. We welcome them with open arms as heroes. Their tours of duty are behind them. Their challenges are not. Many will spend longer coming back from the war than they spent in the war. Retraining, searching for jobs, recovering from scars, some visible, some not. Find out what you can do to help at welcomebackveterans.org. 